All right, in this video, we are going to be taking a look at the winter outlook for 24 and 25. This is going to be kind of just a broad overview. And I do want to preface this and say, look, we have a hard time getting forecasts right just a few days out ahead in time, much less six months down the road. But I do want to talk about some of the things that I'm looking at now, some things I'll be looking at over the next couple of months. So if you enjoy that kind of stuff, come back and subscribe. I'm a former TV chief meteorologist. If you're stopping by, I've been out of television for over five years now, but I still love forecasting and specifically winter forecasting and the challenge that it brings. And I kind of feel like we may be looking at a winter much like this map here that I've drawn. It's crude, I know, but let me give you the idea of what we're looking at. This is a La Nina pattern when you have your jet kind of coming in like this roughly and then sort of exiting here with a bit of a trough in the east. That would tend to be the setup. That would lead to colder than normal conditions here across the northern plains, across the northern tier of the United States, and then across the west. Now that you have a more of an onshore flow here, your jet stream likely a little further north than an El Nino year, which may impact areas further south as that subtropical jet gets stronger. But either way, you're looking at a likely wetter northwest. Also, look here into the Ohio Valley. So if your storm track runs like this, right, you're probably going to set up with a wetter zone here somewhere, say from the Mississippi Valley into the Ohio Valley, up toward the Great Lakes, and then into the northeast. So right here in this area, into the parts of the Appalachians. Now, what does that look like in January when you have more moisture out there and you're cold anyway? Well, if you can get cold enough, and especially if that storm track can set up just right, you may end up with more snow than average here. I think potentially for the Great Lakes, maybe into the northeast. All right, don't hold me to that, but that's your typical... La Nina pattern and the uh, National Weather Service, I should say NOAA rather, is putting out some ideas that we are in for a La Nina year, at least about a 71% chance of that developing over the next couple of months and then likely maintaining through the winter time. And that's the kind of thing you look at across the winter. Now, that also means maybe warmer than average from the mid-Atlantic states, the coastal areas down into the deep south, across over to Texas. And then, you know, even in these areas here, I'm just going to crudely draw this out right in here. Because your storm track is a little further to the north, this area sometimes ends up a little bit drier than average, too, just because of that storm track being a little further north. That doesn't mean we won't get the occasional winter storm or things are going to be fine this winter. But look, that's just a general overview. Now let's talk about some specifics that I'm going to be looking at over the next couple of weeks and months ahead especially as we head into November and December. I, I want you to notice something. September 11th, that generally is uh, right around there is the point in time which we see that Arctic sea ice start to reverse trend. It melts, 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 and then around this time of year, we start to see things swing back up. We start to see that ice develop. And where are we right now? Well, if you look at this, it's this red line right here, 2024. Pretty low, right, compared to some of the years of the past. You really have to go back up here into the late 70s, back into the 80s. That's when you had the most sea ice. And, of course, why does that matter? Well, think about it, guys. You've got to bring that cold air, especially the cold air that develops across Siberia. You've got to bring it across the North Pole. And if it's going across open ocean waters, while it's cold, it's going to start losing some of that cold or that heat is going to be released from the ocean. And eventually you'll freeze it, but it's going to take longer. It's going to warm the air up a little more. So that cold air may not be as strong that comes across the North Pole. And how does that affect the weather? Well, if the air isn't as cold as it may normally be, then sometimes that may cause your jet stream to be a little weaker because you don't have that temperature gradient between the south and the north as that really cold air moves across down into the northern Canadian areas, also down into the United States eventually. But if you look at this, we actually had less ice back in 2012. So not a bottom, not the least iciest year, I should say, around the around the Arctic Sea, but still, uh, you can tell we're down for sure. Go back to 2009 to 2018, we were we definitely had a little more ice. And then if you go back to 1999 to 2008, that was a pretty cold period. You guys probably remember some of the big snows we got. We also had some pretty good snows also right here in this area, 2009, 2010, especially across the east. Now, the Arctic Sea area of uh, ice, again, if you just want to kind of get an idea of what it looks like here, this is all coming over from NASA's website. Uh, this here, this is that we're looking down at the North Pole. Look at where the maximum extent of sea ice was. I'm just going to crudely draw this out back around 1980. There's that ocean water that's open still. So if we bring that cold air that develops over here in Siberia across the North Pole, if you can get a favorable wind flow, whether it's either a high pressure to the south or something, but you get that wind flowing across the North Pole and it's going to have to come across that open ocean. So it will likely warm up 
and it will take a little longer before we see things freeze up here. The least amount of ice we've seen though was back around 2012. I showed you guys that. So we've got more ice here uh, in some areas. So there's a little more ice here than there was a little more here, but certainly it's not off the charts. So maybe very similar to last year as far as the sea ice goes. All right, let's take a look at what's going on at least in the upper levels right now. I, I think it's kind of hard to tell and really judge anything, but one thing that I'm seeing happening is look, our polar vortex is starting to set up. And as you get that cold air developing here, and think about it guys, we are now moving into October, so we're starting to see less and less daylight. Some of these areas are saying goodbye to the sun completely as we head into November and December, especially as we get toward the, the, uh, the winter solstice. Places won't see sun for several weeks, sometimes months. Uh, especially the further north you go. So with that said, we're getting colder and colder. And yes, the seasons are clearly changing. Here's another a different map of that sea ice. But it's also starting to speckle the map here with some snowpack that's trying to build over in the Siberia. It's that time of year when we're starting to see our first snows here. And that will continue to grow. How much snow do we get? Do we continue to see that grow? Also, how much snow do we end up seeing here across the Northwest Territories? Do we start to develop a snowpack here? And also over in Alaska, where there is some snow in the forecast over the next couple of weeks, and that could start to pull some cold air up here that could break off and move south. So we may not have to necessarily tap into what's going on over here in Siberia. And that's typically, again, it takes a little while for that sea ice to form. Uh, that would eventually allow for that ice or that cold air rather to flow across the ice. But what if you get perfectly cross polar flow and that happens and sometimes you can get that. So you'll get that flow that comes right across the North pole and just feeds right down into the East coast, certainly possible and certainly on the table this year. Uh, and I think with a lot Nina pattern, you're likely going to get more of an amplified pattern uh, set up here with more ridging in the West, again, bringing things here into the Pacific Northwest and then kind of dropping down here into the East making things, again, a little wetter than normal here in the Ohio Valley into the Great Lakes, maybe even to the Northeast. So a lot to look at over the next couple of months. Here's your sea surface temperature anomalies. There's your colder water starting to get really pulled to the surface here uh, as we get our flow here going off of, uh, off of South America, off of Central America, kind of like this. So that upwelling happening here, you're pulling that water up from deep in the ocean. So colder surface waters, colder air temperatures are in order. So if what, why, is that, why does that even matter? Well, let's pretend that in an El Nino year, you have warmer air just because of the warmer water. You get that cold air that sometimes moves down to the United States and you create a much sharper temperature gradient. That really drives that southern jet here. Now that we're colder than average, even though we'll still bring that cold air down in to the United States, maybe again, not as cold. I know it doesn't get as cold in Texas and the Southwest, but still cold enough that you would drive a jet stream here. And because we are cooler than normal here, cold here not again not really warm this jet right here tends to be a little bit weaker just because of the temperature gradients not being as strong so a lot to look at you know this is something that i enjoy doing is just looking at these small details and right now for me to tell you in mid mid september you're going to get way above average snow this year i don't know about that but i can tell you typically when you look back at the el nino la nina years this is looking like a La Nina year, and going back to that first map I showed you guys, I think this is kind of what we're looking at heading into the wintertime, December, January, February. That's what we're looking at. That's all I got. See you next time.